Hello, everyone. Welcome back to today's podcast. My name is Brittany Simon. In today's podcast, I want to talk to you guys on how I ended up accomplishing every goal I had set for myself when I was about 15 years old. As you guys know, I have spent my whole time on YouTube ever since I graduated high school. My dad had this um, hope that I would be like I Justine, which is, well, it just did, it didn't end up that way. But I realized the other day when talking to my partner, I did like my list. You know that list you make for yourself, that checklist where you're like, I'm going to do these things, right? I did them and I just didn't realize it. And I think I want to discuss today how we don't even realize how much we've accomplished because we're just in the now moment of whatever we're hoping to accomplish. And so we kind of forget that we've come so far. Now, before I really jump into it today, I am having a honey bush tea. It's over here for refills. I am back to drinking my tea during the podcast. So let me know in the comment sections what you're drinking. But I did go a long time without doing it. And now I'm very, very glad to bring it back into the podcast. So, okay, let's get into it. Mm. The other day I was listening to uh, Cinnamon Toast Ken, if you guys know who that is, he collabs a lot with PewDiePie, but also he has his own channel, his own content. I really like his content and he makes commentary videos and um, he's married to Mary who used to be a cosplayer who I used to like back in the day. She's so adorable and they have like these four beautiful kids, right? He has a really nice life. He has like millions of subscribers and he's traveled. He's got a really cool story, but he recently put out a video where he was feeling really down about his accomplishments and then realized like you need to be grateful for where you're at. But also, you know, if you're in a field like this, there, well, with any job really, you're always going to have that moment of am I good enough? And I realized the other day that I had known this was a problem a lot of YouTubers felt. I mean, a lot of people feel this way. You get to a certain point in your career and you think to yourself like, is this it? Or do I need to shoot for more? And then usually you do. You have that stress of, Oh, I just, you know, you're 20 years old and you're like, I just want to make 50K. You make 50K and you're like, man, I just want to make 100K. You make 100K and you're like, man, I just want to make 150K. Sometimes it feels like we've never accomplished our goals. But as I'm watching, you know, Cinnamon Toast Ken and I'm looking at him and he's saying, oh man, on my lowest months, I was only, I was only gaining like 100,000 views a day. Sir, sir, I get like 100,000 views a month. Everybody relax. I'm a very small YouTuber. But since I accomplished so many of like the financial goals and then the goal of being an independent YouTuber, I feel pretty accomplished. But of course, there's something in me that says, okay, this is a gig job. Okay, you really got to push. You really got to work. You've really got to motivate yourself to make sure that you're putting in enough hours so this is always your job because it is one of those jobs like any of our jobs where you have to show up to work and I think it's hard because you work for yourself you have to get yourself out of bed to do it when there's so much temptation to quote unquote not work so many of my friends have tried doing YouTube and they just end up bailing because it is it requires so much discipline to just do the thing even though it's an easy job in comparison to hard labor work it's still work right so Okay, I'm listening to Cinnamon Toast Ken. I'm reflecting on my own goals and what I've accomplished. And I'm realizing like, oh my gosh, wait a second. Not only have I accomplished so many of my goals, but I accomplished all the little things I had wanted to do as a young person. So I, here I am the other day talking to my partner and we're sitting on the couch and we're rem reminiscing about sort of like our youth. And I tell him, oh, do you know that I used to have my lip pierced? And, oh, I used to have my nose pierced. And, oh, I realized, like, all these little things I dreamed up as a 15-year-old in a conservative home, just waiting for the day I would break out of my bubble and, you know, experience, like, sex or tattoos or gay people, I had done. So at 15 years old, I was obsessed with reading, right? I was, like, reading everything I could get my hands on. I just started my journey after taking a hiatus from reading because I read so much in my elementary years, then took a break. I would enter book competitions in my elementary years, right, to win prizes. Took a break for a few years, became very, like, depressed, <laughs> as one does. And then I got back into reading again, and I would just read, like, a book a day, easy. Like, I was just, like, Doo -doo 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 -doo, just two, 300 pages a day, no problem. And I started to dream about all these things I wanted to do. I wanted to be independent. I wanted to work for my myself. I wanted to be able to dress how I wanted. I wanted to be able to share my opinions. I was obsessed with talk radio growing up, as you guys know. 
And I had these goals of being on talk radio. Now, of course, at the time I was a conservative, but I was like a closeted gay conservative. So it was like a lot of conflict internally, right? You're sitting there. You're like, okay, I'm kind of like gay, bisexual. Maybe I'm, you know, what am I? I'm confused. I was so confused about exactly who I could be and what I could accomplish. And I just wanted to move out of my parents' house just to be able to get a lip piercing. My cousins, some of them had lip piercings. My friends, some of them had lip piercings. I was like, I want a lip piercing. I want to be cool. I was listening to My Chem and The Used and Paramore. And I was like, I want to dye my hair. I want to have cool hair color. I want to do all these things. And of course, growing up in a conservative home, like you had to wait. And it wasn't just about turning 18. The freedom you had at 18 growing up in my household was limited. Like you could stop going to church, which was a big deal. And I obviously stopped doing, but I still couldn't like dye my hair you know, an outrageous color just because I wanted to. So I remember the first experiment I had with dyeing my hair is I went to a hairstylist. This was a mistake. And she ended up putting blonde streaks in my hair and dyeing my hair. It was not what I wanted. It was horrible. She cut my hair like it was straight. It was just like the worst experience. I spent like $200. But it was the only thing I could get like close to dyeing my hair a funky color was putting blonde streaks in it. I know. So I moved out of my parents' house at 21. I moved to San Diego, lived in Hillcrest with my friends, then bounced houses. I was really depressed and kind of useless at this time. And I'm so grateful to my friends who let me live on their couches because honestly, I didn't deserve it. I didn't keep my promises in terms of like getting full-time employment and really kicking butt the way I thought I would. I was just so depressed that I got part-time job. I kind of worked. I was just kind of failing myself time and time again and then failing the people around me. But I got my lip pierced. And I drank with my buddies and I got to go to gay clubs and I got a lot of experience that I had always wanted. I just wanted to be around people who were different. I wanted to be around the nudists and the, you know, I wanted to just be around different, different than I was raised around. So I accomplished so many goals while still kind of like being messy as a person. And I'm lucky my community around me was so supportive. Now, I hopped back and forth between people's homes, if I'm being honest with you. I went to my best friend's parents' house and I stayed on their leg, you know, extra, they had an extra bedroom and I stayed there and I wallowed in myself, you know, pity. I lost all of, I lost like all the dignity I had for myself. I was just giving up on life. But while I was giving up on life, I was also kind of doing life. I was going to party after party. I was drinking with my friends. I was, you know, just exploring life. I was getting tattoos. I was dating girls. I was dating boys. I was like flirting with randos. I don't know. I was doing stuff while I was also like hoping to unalive myself. It was a weird conundrum. And during this time when I was like exploring myself, I was also shooting my credit into the floor. It got to like 400. I lost my cell phone because I didn't pay the bill. I lost my car and I sold it to my siblings because I couldn't handle the bills anymore. I couldn't maintain my stability, but I told myself to keep trying things. So I dated a girl who was in BDSM. I got trained and mentored into BDSM. I explored San Diego. I explored LA. I explored all different scenes of BDSM. I was, again, losing my virginity at 22. Let's go. Thank you to the dude who like helped make that happen. Thanks to the girls who let me go down on them. Thanks to the people in my life who handed me, you know, beers and allowed me to party, invited me to their house parties because so many of those people, you know, for them, I'm just some random girl girl at a party. But for me, like that is my 20s. My 20s was an exploration. It was a do everything I was raised to not do and also find a way to unalive yourself in the process because I was so lonely. I remember when I finally started to get my stuff together. I got a job. I worked full time six days a week. I eventually got a car. I eventually got my cell phone back. I eventually was able to move out of my best friend's parents' house and move into a a room where I rented a room. I still wasn't the greatest tenant. I was still really in my rebellious stage of being a tenant. I didn't quite understand the house rules while living in this house, but it was a woman who rented out rooms in her home and I paid $500 a month, which at the time, the AdSense I was making from YouTube paid my rent. So I was working my job at the grocery store. I was working in the deli. And then I was working YouTube and my AdSense literally paid my rent. And that was amazing at the time. Like I could never even imagine. And just for comparison, my AdSense today is still $500 a month because I'm very unmonetizable. But they also changed how they did things. Way back in the day, you made a lot more money on AdSense. And so, of course, my goal is to get it back up now. If you guys guys have noticed, I've been trying to 
be better with my language so YouTube doesn't demonetize me. But you know what I mean? Like at the time, making $500 on AdSense was a huge deal. It paid my rent. Like it was amazing. So, okay. So I worked the grocery store. My rent was paid from YouTube. I worked the grocery store six days a week. I felt like I was rich. I was making, gosh, I, I probably was making like seven something an hour in Orange County. And I felt like I was on top of the world. I just felt so good because I could pay all my bills and I didn't have to worry. And then the depression happened again and I was undiagnosed borderline. And then my life doubled down. I, that, that was the time when the assault happened. And basically I went downhill again. I lost myself. I lost everything again. I became a wreck. Like I couldn't maintain this feeling I had. I was going to move back. I was going to like move in with my brother who was having a problem with drugs and I was going to do, you know, his life was just kind of like a mess and I was going to move in with like, it was so messy. And eventually I went back home to live with my parents. And if you guys know, I was on YouTube at the time and it was 2012 and everything was imploding again and I was being triggered constantly. But again, I was undiagnosed borderline and I didn't know. And being home at my parents' house is really hard because at the time they were really, really bad at communicating with their kids in a way that didn't make everyone feel like a mess. And I pleaded to the internet and I said, like, I'm, I'm really at my, like, my rock bottom. I'm at a very specific kind of rock bottom and I need something to change in my life. And the time at the time, like YouTube really reached out and supported me, my audience, and I got donations and I moved to Washington State. And that's when I moved to Seattle. In 2012, I moved to Seattle and my life once again completely took a, a change, right? I got more involved in BDSM. I got a full-time job. I did YouTube on the side. I was collabing with people. I was meeting Daniel, Mr. Epsion. Like I was, I was meeting people and collabing and trying to make something of myself. And again, I was given opportunities to know myself. I had sex with a girl for the first time, like full sex. Like I felt I had my first threesome for the first time. I was just open to exploring things. I did needle play and blood play and, you know, DS relationships for the first time. I did so much for the first time. And here, looking back, is 15-year-old Brittany being like, these are all the things, as messy as they sound, were the things I had wanted to do and I wanted to figure myself out by doing these things. I had wondered, like, can I live this life? Can I do these things? Is this what I want? Is this what I want? I became polyamorous. Out, like When I moved out of my parents' house, I explored polyamory. I read all the books. I did that for 10 years plus. I joined nudist groups to try to figure out what it's like to be naked. I learned the different philosophies of like some nudist groups versus others versus some people who just like to be naked. I learned so much about myself. And I did that all in my 20s. Like my 20s, I just went full force. Everything that I ever wanted to do, I did DMT and acid and shrooms. And I smoked weed for the first time at like 28. <laughs> and I never really took a moment to be grateful for 20s Britney doing so much. Like I can't think of one thing I didn't do that I had wanted to do. You know what I mean? Except maybe on a live myself. But you know, that's for a different, you know. <laughs> but I... I really did. I tackled my mental health. By 30 years old, I had done the right kind of therapy. I had spent the right kind of money. I had broken up in the right kind of relationships. I had learned to make the most the most shift. Without my 20s, without doing all of the things I ever wanted to do, without testing everything that I wondered, what's that like? I don't think I would have recovered in my 30s the way I had. So by the time 30 came around, I like waved bye to my 20s. And did something completely different with my life, right? And that's kind of the 30s to 34-year-old Brittany that you see now. That was that shift. Like that's that moment in time. And now I'm probably heading into a different moment of time where I'm now married Brittany. <laughs> and it's kind of crazy. So when I was 15, you know, I really struggled with things like, am I going to marry a man or a woman? And I kind of married a man who like has a lot of really good energy, and, you know, is kind of a combination of everything I could have hoped for in a partner. I moved to a place where I had an ocean view. I've wanted an ocean view my whole life. I'm from California, but I always lived in the, you know, the valleys or I always lived in the country. I always lived in the heart of the city, but never at the beach. And now I have an ocean view. I wanted to do YouTube full time and make it like a really solid career. This is the first time it happened. It didn't even happen at 30. It happened probably the last two years have really given me the confidence to like really do YouTube full time. I've always had a second job just in case, but the last 
two years especially, I've been very confident that YouTube will be my full-time job and I don't need to worry about a second job. I moved to a foreign country. I moved out of this, the United States. That is just so insane for somebody like me. I know for other people, they're like, yeah, no, okay. I, my parents are immigrants, but I didn't think that I would be somebody who would move, to, move out of a place I was so comfortable living, right? I just did so much and I, I really did it because there in some ways was no other choice. I couldn't be the person who woke up at 50 and said like, wow, what have I done with my life? I've never even had a threesome. And don't get me wrong, you don't have to have a threesome. But for somebody like me who wanted to know what everything was like, I needed to get it done in my 20s so I could live out my 30s, 40s, and 50s in a completely different way. I think a lot of people don't do these things in their 20s. So when they are 30, 40s, and 50s, they have those moments of like a midlife crisis. Or they sit down with their partner and say like, hey, we've never had a threesome. I've already done all that. So now I feel like I'm in this like more stability part of my life where I'm focusing on buying a house and solidifying my career and having a healthy relationship. And I'm not to say that threesomes aren't a part of that, but I'm just saying that it's like I'm in a monogamous relationship. My partner's monogamous. We're not talking about threesomes. And I'm so glad that I met my partner when I did because that's not very, you know what I mean? That's not a goal of ours in this relationship. And now I don't have to be married and thinking like, oh, if only I had a threesome. I already had like 20 of them. I'm good. I know what they're like. So much of my 20s was me saying like, I want to make sure I do this. I remember I dated this guy for two years. I was monogamous in the middle of being poly and open. I dated this guy for two years and it was hard because I didn't quite understand why I felt like I was missing out. And I think I did have like kind of FOMO at the time. I don't really like have FOMO now, but I only had FOMO because there was a restriction and I needed to get it done in my 20s. I didn't even know why, guys. It wasn't like I was thinking about it. I was always thinking about unaliving myself. So I didn't, it didn't really matter. But I remember having a conversation with him where I was like, hey, I need to have sex with women. And he was like, yeah, but we're monogamous. I was like, I know, but it, unless you're open to a threesome, and we talked about it. I mean, he was open to maybe doing it, but we never did it together. We had one moment where there was like a girl in our bed and like maybe that could be it. But that girl ended up being the first girl I ended up having sex with, um, but not with him, just with another guy, with her primary because, you know, they're different. And so I was like, okay, I need to do this. And I knew I needed to do it. And in some ways, not to be woo-woo, but who knows? Maybe in some ways I needed to do all those things in my 20s so I could prepare to be the wife I could be for my partner now. Because like I said, my partner now, we're very monogamous and I don't have any of those like desires to like have threesomes anymore. I mean, I after a while, it really is the same. Like, okay, okay, you get it. But maybe I only feel that way because I experienced it. I don't know. I don't have the data to say that if I had never had those experiences, would I feel differently in this relationship now? I don't suffer from FOMO now. I never think about missing out. If I want to do it, I do it. Now, sometimes um, in the beginnings of my relationship with him when we were negotiating boundaries, there were some things like, what if I wanted to do an OnlyFans shoot with somebody? Well, what would that look like? And I do solo work now on my OF. And I really like that. I think I, I make really great photog. I do great photography. I think it looks really beautiful. I'm getting much better at it too as I get older and as I'm trying different things. And I think my content's really worth it. I think it's good, right? And at the same time, do I sometimes dream about doing these great collabs with girls? Sometimes, but not at the expense of my relationship. And I've already done things in the past. And honestly, even when I could do collaborations in the past, they, you know, it's a hit and miss. It's really hard to collab with people unless you have really good chemistry. And so it, it kind of feels silly to have FOMO over something that I know I've already tried in the past and I know it wasn't even that, it wasn't as good as my solo work. It was good, but not as good as my solo work. I think my solo work is better. And so a part of me is still glad. See how I have those lived experiences? I've already done collabs with people in the past. So I know kind of the vibe enough not to be too worried about it now. But we did have great, like very long conversations about this because I was like, hey, I just want to make sure that I'm not going to resent this or regret this. And I think that was a part of the negotiating and the courting part of our, our dating was to make sure that we weren't going to feel like either of us was limiting each other because life is so short and we don't have a lot of time and we want to make sure that we we spend the rest of our remaining time on earth 
doing the things that we want to do, right? And so here's 15-year-old Brittany probably sitting in her room, writing in her journals and thinking to herself, man, I just want the freedom to do what I want. And I really made that happen. She really made that happen. I mean, that 15-year-old Brittany who was writing quizzes and short stories on Quizilla, okay, who is like dreaming about leaving home and traveling and doing all these things, she did that. Who is dreaming about like, I wonder what sex is like. I wonder what being girl with girls is like. She did that. She moved out of her parents' home and went full force into doing what she wanted. And it really, really paid off. Now, I will say, I have met so many people who will say to me, oh, aren't you worried that you're not going to want to be monogamous later? Aren't you worried you're missing out? I really do think that's their FOMO being projected onto me. Like I said, I've had an incredibly adventurous life, a life 15 homeschooled Brittany could never have imagined, a life that 16-year-old public school Brittany dreamed about, read about in her books, and just wanted it to be true. I have lived out every fantasy I'd basically had, including writing a book and getting it published, but I didn't get it published. I got it self-published, but it was still what I needed. I know for some people, they have this goal of like, I want to get the New York Times bestseller list. I had that goal, but then my goal was really just to be able to write down a story. And I wrote down, like I did two fictional stories and one um, nonfiction. And though they're trash, I still did it. And I feel pretty good about that. Now I get it. Everyone has different, bigger goals. Everyone has different things they're reaching for. Like when I watch Cinnamon Toast Ken, and he's a big YouTuber. This guy has like 4 million subbies, right? And I have 80,000. But I'm sitting here thinking like I accomplished so much. I just wanted YouTube to be my full-time job. I'm pretty happy. If my income stayed here where it was right now, if my viewership stayed here where it was right now, for the rest of my working career, I would have a very good life. A very good life. Because I don't have any goals that I need to accomplish outside of buying a home, which I could do on this income if I saved for like five years, I'd be really good. If I was patient, if we if we lived very like reasonably, then we could absolutely have a good life. But if I wanted a house tomorrow, well, yeah, then I would have to be very big and I have to make millions of dollars and I would be very, you know, if I wanted a yacht, well, yeah, that'd be different. If I wanted to have four children, yeah, I would need to make more money. And so I can understand that when your goals change, those things can change. But that's, that's I think, the thing that I'm always trying to practice is being grateful for what I've accomplished when I knew that my goals were always simple. And then if I wanted to add anything onto those goals, like having five kids or having this or having that, that could be something different to talk about. Now, growing up, I always wanted six kids and, you know, that's expensive. But realistically, like I was never going to have six kids. I'm in my 30s. I'm 34. I'm not having six kids. Now, by the time my mom was 34, she had five kids and there were five more on the way. But I'm not my mama. My mom, her generation, those women I knew who all had 10 kids, eight kids, 11 kids, 12 kids, those homeschooling moms, they're amazing. But like that was never going to be my story. I knew when I was in homeschooling still, there was a boy who had a crush on me and I had a crush on him. And one time we snuck, you know, around the corner so we could talk about our, you know, our like secret crushes. And he was like, don't you th like, don't you think we're going to be together? I was like, no, because you're my never going to happen. He's like, you're never going to happen. I was like, yeah, you're my never going to happen. He's like, what does that mean? I was like, I think it means that as much as we kind of like joke about being together, like we're never going to happen. I know I'm not going to stay here. I know I'm not going to be Catholic. I know I'm going to go be adventurous. I know I'm going to go break rules. I just know it. I can feel it. And I was like 14 at the time. He was like, how do you know that? I was like, something just tells me I'm going to go do a lot of things in life. Like I'm going to go be kind of crazy. And I probably knew that at the time because I was reading vampire books and I was reading like BDSM adjacent things and I was reading things in lore and I was watching, you know, movies and I was like, oh, I kind of want some of this. But all the things I wanted wasn't being offered to me in the bubble I was raised in. And so him and I, you know, we like we had our moment. It was really cute. Like I really appreciate all the crushes I had during my homeschooling days and all the boys and girls that I interacted with. Like I appreciate all of those memories. Like what important moments of my life. What beautiful moments of my life. Even 14-year-old Brittany knew she needed to do something more. So for some people, they may look at my life and think like, oh, Brittany's life is so simple. She's not like, she's not where I thought she would be. And that's definitely how I even see myself 
you know, saw myself, 25 year old Brittany would definitely see me and be like, yes, this is what we wanted. I just imagined it would be different. But I think 14 year old Brittany, 15 year old Brittany, I think this is what she imagined. If I'm being honest with you, I think 15 year old Brittany did imagine this because I remember being 15 and I don't remember dreaming about lots of money. I remember dreaming of lots of freedom. And yeah, money can give you freedom, but you know, money can also be a cage. I think 21, no, 25, probably 25 year old Brittany was more a slave to the idea of making more money. She was probably more in the rat race, but I know 15 year old Brittany, who's my favorite age, the 15 year old version of me is the one I always keep in mind. She had really wholesome dreams. She just wanted to be in love. She just wanted a nice place. She just wanted to do what she wanted and she just wanted to dress how she wanted. She just wanted to wake up and feel good in her body. Like to this day at 34 years old, I cannot send my mom like a video of me in a midriff. I cannot wear a crop top and send my mother a video. My own brother, like who's really religious, if I send a a video of me and a low cut top, even slightly low, even slightly low, he won't watch it. They're so religious that they're like, "Mm mm-mm. And I love my family. They're really dope. But bro, even at 34 years old, I can't send my mama a video of me in a crop top. What are we talking about here? You know? So when I look at 15-year-old Brittany and I look at my life now, I'm walking around naked. I'm like making out with my husband. I'm like looking at the ocean with him. We're talking about our life. We're having just the most relaxed existence. This is what I wanted. It was always what I wanted. Someone who loved me and saw me, a good relationship with myself, a handle on my mental health, right? A good job that I actually liked waking up and going to. I'm working seven days a week and I am loving it right now. It's 6.30 p.m. and about an hour and a half, I will be going live. I went live for seven hours last night. I am so impressed with me. Like, who is she? She is a person who worked really hard to make everything fit in her life because of that 15-year-old teenager that she once was. That 15-year-old teenager is literally the reason my life is where it's at. Because if 15-year-old Brittany didn't have those goals and those dreams, who would I have been doing this for? So this isn't 34-year-old Brittany that made this happen. This is 15-year-old Brittany. And without her, where would I be? So I want you guys, and I'm so curious, what is the age you look back and you think like that was the version of yourself that you're doing stuff for. Is there an age? Are you doing it for the current self you are? Like even now, like current day you? Or are you doing it for like 12-year-old you or 6-year-old you or 30-year-old you or 40-year-old you? Like where are you on your journey? And which version of yourself are you accomplishing these goals for? You know what I mean? Or did you have goals you set out for and then they change so rapidly? Because that's what I'm curious about. I just... I can't believe I had this epiphany. Guys, I used to have my lip pierced. Who is she? Like I, I've seen so many bands in concert. Like even that, even small things like, oh, I've seen Mike Kim in concert. I've seen Paramore, Tegan and Sarah. Like I've seen people, Smashing Pumpkins. Like I've seen people live. Oh my gosh. Like it, it's just like, I've even seen Fall Out Boy. I don't even like Fall Out Boy, but I was, I saw Wiz Khalifa. Wiz Khalifa was so, I love Wiz Khalifa. Oh my God, he was so good. But like I've seen all these people live and I'm not even a concert goer. But it's kind of cool that I have all these lived experiences. Like, did you ever hear stories from your parents where they're like, oh, I saw Elvis. Oh, I saw the Rolling Stones. Oh, I actually saw blah, 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 blah. I have those stories now. Like, if I have kids, I will be able to say to them, oh, yeah, I did that. Your mom did that. Not that I will have kids, but you know what I'm saying? I did that. And here I was worried that I hadn't lived, here I was, not not Kurt and me, but 15-year-old me was almost worried I wouldn't live a life. But without 15-year-old me worrying I wouldn't live a life, I wouldn't have lived a life. Crazy. Just amazing. What a wonderful epiphany to have. What a wonderful realization to have, to realize like, oh no, like I did that. I did it. There's nothing. That's why I feel maybe probably so content. So that so I'm basically accomplished all my goals. 
Now the goal is maintenance. So obviously you want to maintain your health and your, your financial goals. You want to maintain your job. You want to maintain, which will come with its natural stress. Of course, life itself is stressful because we're dealing with like survival, the everyday stuff. So now that's the game. The game is maintenance. Guys, I spent my whole life surviving when I just wanted to live and now I'm living, which in some ways is surviving, but it's not the same. I have no fear of accomplishing things. I have no fear that I won't do things. I have no fear. I have no fear in terms of what I'm able to do because look at everything I did, everything I ever wanted. And that's kind of amazing. There is so much to be grateful for. And I am insanely grateful for 15-year-old Brittany for wanting all of those things. All of those things. Man, okay, one last thought and then I'm going to go. Do you remember watching TV shows like How I Met – I'm a millennial, so How I Met Your Mother or even Seinfeld or even Sex in the City and thinking like, oh, I just want that to be my life. I made it my life. I made a video forever ago when I was renting a room from that lady. I made a video saying instead of buying a picture, an art piece that represents the life you have, make your life the art piece. And I did that. I did that. I Pinterest boarded my future and I made it happen. All thanks to 15-year-old Brittany. Okay, I'm going to get going. Thank you for watching. Have the most fantastic day. And please let me know if you guys feel like you've gone on this journey yourselves. I know my audience ages with me. So as I get older, you guys get older. And I'm just curious, like, what have you done with your life in the, in the last 15 years? Where are you at? What's been going on? Do you feel like you are living for a different version of yourself? And would they be happy with you? Would they be like, we did it or we're still doing it, but at least we're doing it. You know what I mean? Okay. I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye. Today I want to talk about decorating your life. And I don't mean decorating your room though. That does have something to do with this video. I was contemplating this the other day. I was examining some art and I thought to myself, I would love to live in that room. I would love to have this painting so I could examine this room, reflect upon this room, and imagine myself in it. And I realized I had spent so much time and money and effort into buying art or pictures or saving pictures online that represented what I wanted without ever investing in what I wanted. And so with this new room, this new place, I've decided to invest in things that would contribute to the room and the decoration to create what I want. You know, throughout life we sometimes do that a lot. A lot. We read books that, you know, have characters that live the life we want, but we never bother doing it ourselves. And for some of us, it's because we're afraid to live the lives we want. And so we live it through other characters. Some of us live it through our friends or family. And I just decided I'm not going to do that anymore. So instead of investing in art that represents the room I want, I'm going to create the room I want in the room I live in. I to share that idea with you because for some reason, it actually made a difference in my life. Thank you for watching and I hope you have a great day. My head in real life while I'm dead My belly's being fed and I'm okay I'm just fine, yet all I do is whine Not to you in my mind, cause I know I don't make sense I've been nothing but blessed So why's my life a mess? Please tell me, cause I'm sick of thinking Yeah, I'm sick of reaching out Thank you.